Good morning, folks. Uh, my name is Gar Rothwell, and together with Ashley Klimiuk and Ruth Stocky, I would like to introduce, characterize, and publicize a remarkable lower Cretaceous plant assemblage that occurs on the north end of Vancouver Island. Now, uh, approximately 20 years ago, Ruth and I were conducting a fossil plant preparation workshop for the uh, Vancouver Island Paleontological Society at Graham Beard's house in Pollicum Bay. And one of the participants, Gerald Cranham, shared with us a microscope slide that was made from a marine carbonate concretion that showed spectacularly well-preserved tiny bits of fossils. And so impressive were these that we mounted a um, collecting trip to the site, which set in motion a nearly two decades long uh, study that I will summarize for you today. Come on, let's see here. Got to hit slideshow. You know, well, there is no slideshow to hit here. For some reason or other, it didn't jump right into it. It's at the bottom. That didn't work. Um, Roll up. Let's try this one. No, that doesn't work either. Um, I've gotten myself into a bad loop here somehow. What, what are you seeing when you look at this? Uh, Gar, what did I see? Okay, now we got the full screen. Okay, is that better? Yeah, uh, okay. see if you can go forward. Okay. Now... Um, Good, thanks, that works. All right, th these fossils are found along the shore of Holberg Inlet on the northern end of Vancouver Island, uh, near the town of Coal Harbor. Uh, they um, are from the long arm formation equivalent and which is probably Valaginian stage of the early Cretaceous at Apple Bay. Now the locality itself occurs on the shingle beach where these small carbonate concretions occur within the gray wacky matrix, then uh, they show very little in the way of plant material until you slice them open and then the beautiful plants are uh, obvious in them. The uh, flora that I'm going to share with you today includes both spore producers and seed producing plants. And uh, these are remarkably diverse. They include fungi, mosses, ground pines, horsetails, and ferns of the spore producers. Uh, in these slides, you'll see I put um, the living counterpart next to the sections of these so that you don't have to be a plant anatomist to recognize what they are. In the upper right, we have a small fragment of tissue with pores in it, which represents a shelf fungus where the spores are produced on the underside and uh, are released at the bottom of these. The uh, mosses and liverworts that will be discussed more thoroughly in a uh, presentation by Alec Bippus later this morning um, are represented by these tiny tufts of uh, stems with their leaves. This stem and its surrounding leaves are only about a half a millimeter in diameter. The um, Lycopods or ground pines are represented by two types. Uh, one is um, represented in on the right here, which is the genus Lycopodium. And you'll see these two Lycopodium plants here with the uh, seed cone at the bottom for scale. The horsetails are represented by two species of Equisetum. And unlike most other plants, Equisetum has green stems and branches and leaves, which is the tiny collars uh, of these brown, brown material that you see here on the plant. This cross section shows the stem and uh, one of these collars of leaves with five leaves in the whorl. 
Now, there are, is a remarkable diversity of ferns here. There are more than 15 species of more than nine families. These three that I've chosen to represent them represent the Osmoon Daisy, where you see the, the uh, piece of a frond axis and clusters of sporangia that are like those of the regal fern here, Osmunda regalis, in the fertile parts of its frond. The higher philocales are represented by this fossil, which is similar to the living genus Terrace. This is described from Apple Bay as Pterosaurus. And you see here a single uh, saurus of several sporangia with long stalks. And in the center is a representative of the tree ferns, which are tropical today. And this fossil represents a bit of the pinnule, a, a saurus of sporangia with spores, and an indusium, which is characteristic of the genus Cyathea, which we named Cyathea cranami in honor of Gerald Cranham having brought the locality to our attention. Now, the seed plants belong to five different groups. The conifers, which are of the Pinaceae and Cupressaceae, are quite diverse. There are more than 10 types of leaves of the Pinaceae. There are pollen cones and three types of seed cones. Here we see three leaves of the Pinaceae. This triangular needle is the oldest evidence of Pinus in the fossil record. The um, ovoid specimen here is Douglas fir, and the nearly round needle is from a dory phylum, a fossil genus of Pinaceae that was described from Apple Bay. The Cupressaceae is also represented by large numbers of specimens, four kinds of leafy shoots, pollen cones, and seed cones. Here's a leafy shoot with its leaves on it. And on the left is another leafy shoot that terminates in two pollen cones, one here and one here. And here you can see the pollen within the pollen sacs. The seed cone that you see on the right here has a seed that's attached near the upper surface right here. The last groups of these are less well-known types of seed plants, cycadioids, which is an extinct group, cycads, and the neophytes. The cycads and cycadioids have very similar type of vegetative structure, but their fertile parts are very different. Uh, the cycadioids uh, have two types of leaves here. Here's a strap-shaped leaf, you'll see with a broad midvein, which shows up down here in cross-section. There are two types of seed cones. This is an immature cone of Williamsonia, where the seeds show up surrounded by these white halos. Oops. Uh, the neophytes are represented by the genus uh, Proto-Ephedrides, which was described from Apple Bay. It's similar to ephedra, or um, which has these small cones, which look like berries here. The fossil is a cone, and it shows a, a seed in cross-section here, and another seed in this position, which is attached. The last two types of fossils that I will show you are new to science from Apple Bay. The first was described in 2009 in the bicentennial issue of the American Journal of Botany wrecking, uh, that was published on the uh, 200th anniversary of Charles Darwin's birth. You'll see fossils of this, which we call doilia, one here and one here on the cover. When we look at these more closely, we see there's a distinctly triangular seed in cross-section, and it is completely surrounded by tissue, which we, is superficially similar to that of the carpal of a flowering plant. Now, had these been flowering plants here in the Valaginian, they would be the oldest evidence of macrofossils for flowering plants in the fossil record. They occurred before the Beremian when the first explosion of angiosperm radiation occurred. However, when we found more specimens of these, we discovered these tetrahedral seeds were found in cones on lateral appendages here and here, and that these are compact seed cones seen in this mirror reconstruction and this mirror reconstruction. And since we discovered these doilia 
Tetrahedra sperma, four species of this have been described from the lower Cretaceous of Mongolia. Here in this reconstruction of Doilea mongolica, we see the sea cones and strap shaped leaves of the Pseudotorelia type. The Apple Bay equivalent of that is seen here, and this is an undescribed um, Pseudotorelia leaf. The last new type of cupulate seed plant is represented by three specimens, one in longitudinal section and two in cross section. If we look at the longitudinal section, we see that these are oval and that the seed here at the center is surrounded almost completely by the cupule and it is attached only at the base. In cross section, the seed is roughly triangular with rounded corners. It has a seed coat of three zones here, here, and here, and it is completely surrounded at the mid region by the cupule, which is made up of thin walled cells and this ring of resin canals, which show up as ovals with the uh, epithelial linings being darker. Near the base, we see the vascular tissue of these, which is systematically important for working out homologies of these. This has at the base of it, a radial steel, like a stem, and it gives off three uh, traces that go into the base of the cupule. Only two of them show up in this oblique section, this one entering the cupule at this level. Here's the steel again at a slightly higher level, where we see a parenchymatous pith, and the cells in this region, uh, magnified here, uh, show up as radial rows of thick walled water conducting tracheids, indicating that this is a woody plant, which has its cupulate seeds at the tip of a stem-like structure. Now, these have been reconstructed using the graphics program Amira, although it I can't keep it on the screen here. Uh, at the base of this, we see in purple the steeler region, and then the three bundles at the base of the cupule, one here, one here, and one here. And if we go through the sections that were used to make this reconstruction from the highest level here down toward the base, we see that these get smaller, that the resin canals, which show up around here, converge, and finally near the base, there is merely the steel that shows up, and that can be reconstructed by a mirror as the vascular tissue down here, the base of the seed, and the cupule, which is represented here only by the resin canals. Now, a similar series near the apex of the seed, extending from this level in this immature specimen where the seed coat is here and the cupule is here, shows us that these get smaller as you go toward the apex, that the seed apex is elongated and it eventually extends beyond the tip of the cupule here, so it can be reconstructed in cross section and longitudinal section like this. The seed with its elongate apex is in gold and the cupule is in green. Putting these reconstructions together then, we can get a very good idea of the structure of these, this type of fossil. So to summarize, the apple bay seed plants are exceptionally diverse. As we look at this seed plant phylogenetic tree with the, with the base of the tree here and the angiosperms or flowering plants at the tip here, we see that there are five major groups of plants represented at, at uh, apple bay. Three of these, uh, cycads, of uh, conifers and neophytes are well known, but the two represented by the long arrows are new to science, including the doiliales and the new specimens that have yet to be described. But you'll notice there are no arrows down here in, or up here in the area of the flowering plants because there are no flowering plants here. So in summary, this is an exceptionally diverse flora for the lower Cretaceous. It reflects the Cretaceous explosion of seed plant evolution, and no flowering plants are yet present in this assemblage, supporting the uh, previous work, which finds that the flowering plants first appear in the fossil record in the Baremian and then undergo their rapid explosive evolution. Now, for those of you who might be interested in the 
uh, deposition and fossilization of these, a paper by Garoslavsky Kordish et al. has just appeared in this edited volume, Limnogeology. And I have a, um, a PDF of that. So anybody who might be interested in it, simply email me and I will fire off a copy of that to you. Thank you. Okay, thank you.